All right, hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my first video that I'm doing on books that I've read so far. Um, we are already in June, so my goal of reading, I think 34 books is pretty behind. I'm, I'm pretty behind, but it's fine. I, I've accepted it. I have a lot to catch up on. I wanted to go through the books that I read from the months, between the months of January and June. Much better, let me take off my glasses. And there are two that I wanted to talk about that I DNF'd. It was, uh, This is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone. If you are interested in book content and want me to continue talking about them, then I might talk more about the app that I use. I use um, Storygraph to track my book reading and it just depends if this is something that people even want. But the first book that I read this year was uh, This is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone. And I did this as, I read it as an audiobook. I gave it a 2.75 out of 5. It really wasn't for me. I think something to note about my reading preferences. I don't like books that have anything to do with time travel. It really takes me out of it and I just don't know why I I thought that would change. <laughs> so unfortunately for me it was a 2.75 but I heard you know a bunch of people really do like it and that makes me so happy. There's an audience for that. I'm just not the one. I then read it Will Never Happen to Me Growing Up with Addiction as Youngsters, Adolescents, and Adults by Claudia Black. This is a book that was like therapy homework. I read this when I was a kid because if it isn't like something, it isn't something I really talk about online, um, but I did grow up with an alcoholic parent and um, I did find myself when I was little reaching for resources. And that was one of the books. Um, I gave it a 4.25 out of five stars, just because it is a little bit dated <laughs> and that's fine. This book came out in the 80s, so that's, that's to be expected. Next, I read Iris Kelly Doesn't Date by Ashley Herring Blake. This is my first sapphic romance. I gave it a five out of five. <laughs> I loved it. It was just so wholesome and I had such a good time reading it. Um, I did this as an ebook and I quickly realized I'm a big fan of this author's writing. So I wanted to buy um, the rest of her books physical. This will be the only ebook that I have and I might even go and purchase it. Um, just because I really liked it and I I would definitely want to reread it. I have a few other books by Ashley Herring Blake that I want to um, read the remainder of the year so we'll see. I have uh, so I have Astrid Parker Doesn't Fall and this is on my TBR. I have another one that I'm reading right now and I'll put the name of it right here. Um, I just really enjoy her writing and I didn't think that I would like romance, but here we are. <laughs> you just need to find like your thing. I read Another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson. I did this one as an audiobook. I gave it three out of five. Um, it was supposed to be like something reminiscent of A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, I think the last name is. I'm not sure. I might have to check myself on that. I haven't read that book, I haven't read A Little Life, but I heard that Another Brooklyn was similar to it. Now, I don't know, so I can't compare. Um, when I get to reading that book, then I'm sure I'll have a better idea, but I gave it a three out of five. I remember just not really feeling that invested in the story, and I think it's because, from my memory, the book wasn't very long, so, I think it just lacked a little bit of depth, but you know, that's okay. I just, I wanted to give it a shot and it just wasn't like the best read. 
Um, it did make me emotional in some parts, but overall, three out of five. And then I read Almond by Woon Young Son. I did, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I read that as an audiobook, five out of five. Easy. It was beautifully written. I wish I had a physical copy. This happens sometimes where I'm reading audiobooks and I just end up like really loving it and I wish I had a physical copy or I wish I read it as a physical copy. So that might be a book that I purchased like secondhand. Um, next, I read My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5. Sorry, my dog. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. I really, really enjoyed it. Without getting into too much of a spoiler for this, I mean, it's obvious the friend goes through an exorcism, but the the layers and the complexity of this story just really, really grabbed me. The, the friendship that these two have is so beautiful. And I read it sort of as like a response to something that I had gone through. And this really did just hit home for me. I. I'm gonna lend it to one of my friends and see if she likes it or if she's read it. Well, I've, I'll find out. But I just thought it was so great. Um, it is pretty 80s. It's got like a very cool cover, as you can see. And yeah, I just, I adored it. It was great. Definitely a reread. Um, I did give it a, a 4.5 out of 5 just because at some points it felt a little bit cheesy, but I guess that's to be expected. Then I read We Are All the Same in the Dark by Julia Haberlin, and I'll put the photo here. My sister has this book. I lent, I basically gave it to her because I finished reading it. I gave it a four out of five. It was very much a detective solves hometown crime, and that's really all I needed to know. I really liked it. It was a fun, quick read. There were some callbacks within the novel that just really tugged at my heart. Um, and it took me to like an unexpected place. I really, really enjoyed that. But it did get a four out of five because, you know, it, it, it followed a lot of like cliches. So that was fine. And I finally finished Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machada. I gave this a 3 out of 5, and I have a lot of thoughts on this book. Um, I really, I did enjoy it. I did. I just, <laughs> it wasn't that great. I was expecting a lot more. The first story really is the only one that grabbed me. Um, it's based off of this old tale that I'm sure a lot of people have heard growing up. The woman with a green ribbon around her neck and when she takes the ribbon off, her head falls off, that sort of thing. Um, that, that her take on this, on that short story was really well written. The rest of them had a similar voice and... I struggle even critiquing that because I know how hard it is to write. I know how hard it is to create different voices for different characters. I studied literature. I have my bachelor's in literature and creative writing. I understand the difficulties. Um, with that being said, I do feel like a lot of the, the voices in these different, in these different, um, short stories are a lot similar to one another. Almost like they didn't just quite create their own character. I felt like I was reading one person going through several different things and I don't think that that was the intention. So yeah, 3.5, three out of five stars. Um, there was one whole chapter of this, there was one whole short story in this book that was just SVU summaries and I got incredibly bored. I had to skip it because it was just not for me. 
it was literally summaries of different episodes of SVU and I don't know if I missed a story or something within that but it just was not it didn't make any sense for me it completely took me out of it and I almost wish it was omitted from the collection overall so that's on this one um I don't know if I showed it but yeah this is um Claudia Black's Children of Alcoholics I have all the tabs <laughs> Um, and then I have two DNFs that I wanted to go over really quick, um, just because I felt like they were substantial. This one is called These Ghosts Are Family by Maisie Card. Beautiful cover. The sentiment was there. The idea was there. I just felt like it read like a short story. And because it's in a novel format, it did not make sense. Um, you really have to like, I don't want to say you really have to like separate them because that's not the point. The point is to read it as a full novel and get through the story in one go. Whereas the way that it was written was written like they were short stories. So you're following, yeah, and I can read the summary just to give you like an idea of what I'm talking about. After giving up his fight against arthritis, na that now leaves him wheelchair bound, Stanford Solomon decides the time has come to reveal his 35 year old secret. In the early 1970s, a man named Abel Painsley left Jamaica for England in search of fortune. Not long after Abel's arrival in London, his childhood friend, whom he had been working alongside on a cargo ship, dies tragically. Abel Paisley makes a choice. He decides to steal his friend Stanford's identity and fake his own death, consequently forsaking the young family he left behind in Jamaica. Just to give you a summary of what it's, what it's about. Now, I was super interested in this, but because the format just didn't fit the vibe, I had to stop reading it. I think I only got to like, I don't know, page... 80 or something I had to stop it just wasn't making sense there was too much and the format of it didn't do it justice the next book I wanted I really wanted to love was Shakespeare was a woman and other heresies by Elizabeth Winkler I follow her sister Caroline Winkler um, here on YouTube and I really really wanted to like it I just don't think I was in the mental the the mental capacity that it takes to read a book like this it is so filled with uh just so many different things it definitely reads like a detective sort of novel she's uncovering different things about shakespeare things that she's learning and i really really appreciated the investigative nature of the book but i just it wasn't, it was kind of difficult for me to follow. And that's coming from somebody who, again, like studied this. <laughs> um, and I, I, I wonder if I just needed to be in the right headspace for this type of book. It was not what I was expecting. It's extremely academic and that's totally fine. I just think I should pick it up when I'm ready to dig deep and highlight and annotate. This is like an annotate type of book. I love the cover. Um, I did DNF it. Her sense of humor is not for me. Um, <laughs> I am a little nervous saying that. Um, she is she is funny, but it's just, again, not for me. I don't know if the balance of the investigative nature of this text along with her sense of humor kind of took me out of it. I think I just needed to pay more attention. Um, and that might just be like my own fault. So that's fine. I can try again. I can try again when I'm ready. <laughs> so yeah, um, I did DNF it, but that might just be for now. Again, these are the three books that I had here physically. And these are the ones that I either listen to an audiobook or no longer own in my collection. If you want more book videos, let me know. I'm just trying things out. I I know that this channel is mainly art, but I have been 
in school, I had been in school for literature for years and that's what I have my bachelor's in literature and creative writing. So if you want more book content, let me know. I would be happy to oblige. I do have a longer list of books that I am reading right now. I'm reading about six. I tend to read things in chunks. Um, so I like to have one horror, one either similar like self-help or financial or spiritual. Um, and then I like to have short stories, a memoir, and um, a classic. Um, and right now I'm reading a couple of books. So if you want, <laughs> if you want more book videos, let me know and we can keep talking about them. I really enjoyed making this. This was different and like kind of fun being in front of the camera. I know I'm always making art videos, but again, my first love was books. So yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>